Hello coders, today we're going to be talking about remote development jobs and how to get one. I've been a remote developer for eight, nine years. I'm joined by Murphy, Murphy Pup. He's my English Springer Spaniel, only just a puppy. He's about to go to sleep, hopefully. Today we're going to be talking about remote development. So how does one get a remote development job? What is the easiest way to do that? In my opinion, um, and this is just opinion here, the easiest way to get a remote development job is to work currently in the company that you want to work remotely for. This is because, um, I'm gonna throw out an analogy here, this is because if you think of remote development as the product that you wish to purchase, then you need to use trust as the currency. So the more trust that you can show, the more responsible that you are, that you can show off to your employer, your line manager, your team leader, whoever you you um, report to, the more likely it is that they can offer you a remote position. Which means that you kind of need to be in that position for a good, I would say, six months to a year before you can even consider becoming a remote developer. Also, not only trust, but you need to understand the process. You need to understand how they work, how the company works. You need to know the social culture, the culture of the company. You need to understand the technical debt in the system. You need to understand the decisions that were made. And really the, the best way of understanding that is by being in an office with other developers who have already got that experience. You also need to be have the ability to ask all sorts of questions and keep asking those questions. It's easier to ask those questions if you're not remote, if you are actually there sitting by the person that you need to ask the question to. So I'm gonna move over here because it's a bit lighter. So remote development requires trust and it requires knowledge of the company that you're working for. So I would suggest be in the company for the first six months to a year. Also, what I suggest is you want to be planning ahead. You want to be trying to uh, test the waters, I guess you could say, to understand whether you are capable of working remotely. So here I'm suggesting um, maybe if you need to take a day off or maybe if you need to take um, some time out of the working environment, perhaps you've got a delivery, perhaps you've got to see a doctor, perhaps you're recovering from an accident and there is a portion of time where you need to work remotely because of some external reason, use that time to test the waters out to see if you can actually do this in a long-term view. I suggest uh, making sure that you have regular git commits. So if you're working in a branch, make sure that you push that branch up to a remote repository. That gives you some sort of uh, record of all of the commits that you make. Make sure you do that on a regular, uh, regular sort of schedule, right? Also, make sure that when you are actually talking to someone and you are doing so in a remote manner, so maybe it's a conference call, make sure you're prompt, make sure you have the hardware you need in order for that to happen. Make sure that you have all the bits and pieces, say the headset. Also make sure that your environment that you're working in is nice and quiet that you can just focus on the task at hand. All of these signals will show the employer, show your boss, show the person that you're reporting to that you are actually capable of doing this. And so when you go and request to work remotely, you can already say, look, you know, I've been doing these things you know, maybe I've needed to, to work remotely for half a day or, or two days because something happened. You can prove yourself. You're not just suddenly doing it cold turkey. Now, there are a couple of times where you would land a remote developer job straight away. Uh, for example, um, if you're working for a company that is completely uh, outside of your country, right? So commuting is just a no-no, then you you might be able to land a remote position there. That's happened with me a couple of times. I've got some clients over in the States, in Europe and so forth. And, you know, I, I haven't actually seen the people in person. I've seen the, the clients through perhaps uh, uh, conference calls and so forth, but I haven't actually been to their office. That is, I guess, the true sense of remote working. 
However, all the other remote jobs that I've had, and in my nine years of doing so, I've had to go and see the client. Um, and usually I see the clients quite often at the first sort of stint of that remote job because I need to understand the process. I need to understand how they've come to their decisions. I need to meet with other developers, meet with the, the, uh, the project owners, the, you know, understand the business requirements. And so it's usually the first sort of week or month or however long it takes is going in and actually speaking to people and, and reading documents and doing it on site. Once I understand the process, once I've proven that I can actually do this remotely, then I get offered to do it. You know, I, I take on the remote position. Um, I've been a remote developer for, as I said, a, a quite, quite a few years now. Remote development is something that I need in my in my day to day. So it is a requirement for me to be able to have something remote at some point, even if that's perhaps, you know, after two months or a week or two weeks or what have you after the initial sort of bedding in period. Uh, but don't expect that you're just going to pick up a remote job straight away. Um, and also, really, if you're a junior developer, you really shouldn't be considering remote work straight away, in my opinion. That's just my opinion, because you're you're junior at this. You need to understand how the web works, how web development works, how you actually get something that is production ready. And really, you need to have the ability of bouncing ideas off of people. If you are the smartest person in the room, then you are in the wrong room. And if you're the only person in the room as a junior developer, then really you need to be in a room full of other devs, <laughs> in my opinion. You need to have that uh, ability of, of asking questions. The thing is when you're remote, it's very tempting to not ask questions and just try and do something yourself. And as I've mentioned in previous videos, when you are a junior developer, you are trying to prove yourself. And sometimes it's one of these things where you're trying to prove yourself by getting on and doing it on your own, but that's not always the best thing to do. Hello Murphy, how's it going? <laughs> So let's talk about why people would want to be a remote developer. Um, so there's a couple of reasons. One is obviously the commute. So if the commute is really long, then it's going to benefit you and the company that you're working for to be remote because they'll, you'll be less stressed when you get in because you're not having to deal with the idiots on the road. Um, so the commute is a big one. Also, uh, money. So if you're in a country that is uh, low paying, then you might want to be a remote developer or working remotely for a country that is high paying not only countries, but towns and cities as well. There's different pay scales. So if you're if you're working closer to the capital, then perhaps that's a, a, a better pay scale um, than where you are in, say, a village. Also, uh, medical reasons. So if you've got a medical condition, if you've you know, got some mental health issues, then working remotely is sometimes more beneficial. Um, also, if you physically cannot get to the office, Again, that is a reason why remote work is beneficial. And then also there's other things in life, such as having children or having other commitments that require a little bit of time. And that would be used during the commuting time. So you wouldn't actually have a chance to commute to work because you need to do other things. So remote work is actually beneficial to you as a developer, but also to the company as well, because you can deal with your own personal stuff without having to worry about commuting in and getting into the office. As Murphy terrorizes his teddy bear, I will leave you with the analogy again. And that is that if you're wanting to be a remote developer, you need to treat that as the product that you're going to purchase. And you purchase that using the currency of trust and understanding of the processes. And you need to build up that trust. And the only way you can do that is by proving yourself. And the easiest way to prove yourself is to be working at that company for say six months to a year. Okay, I better go and take this one for a walk. Happy coding everyone. See you again soon. Cheers, bye. Before we go, I just want to say that if anybody wants to join the Discord channel, then please do so. Go to howtocopewell.net forward slash Discord. There's channels in there for coding help. There's channels in there for coding challenges, new coders, 
lots of stuff for programming. There's a nice little community that's building up there. So if you've got any coding questions you want to ask, then do check out howtocodewell.net forward slash discord. Of course, if you want to support the channel and if you want to get early access to some of these podcasts and the tutorials that I've got on the YouTube channel, then do check out our Patreon account. That's patreon.com forward slash how to code well. You'll also get access to the pro user Discord channels and the voice chat channels as well. Thanks very much. Happy coding, everyone. I'll see you again in the next one. Cheers. Bye.